Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and this new tutorial on PyTorch. So in previous video, we learned about uh, dropouts, like how we can use it and uh, how it helps to generalize the model better. In this video, we will uh, mainly focus on uh, another very important component uh, known as uh, uh, batch norm or layer norm. Okay, so we have two variations of this uh, component. One is called batch norm and then there is an extended version of this which is called layer norm. In this video, we will mainly focus on batch norm and then we will discuss about like what are the limitations of it and then how layer norm uh, uh, resolves that in the next video. Okay, so let us dive in and like uh, understand uh, where we uh, need batch norm and how it helps. So, there are the situations where uh, the model has to deal with uh, uh, very high uh, degree of non-linearities. Okay? In those cases, uh, if we inject uh, batch norm in our model, it will help the training process uh, to achieve the optimization quite quickly or the training uh, process would be much faster so, to deal with uh, uh, very high degree of non-linearity, what we do is we simply use very uh, low learning rate and also we initialize the uh, learning weights very carefully. Okay? And it is not necessarily the optimal for that particular setting and that is where uh, uh, batch norm or layer norm are very useful. Okay? So, what it does is simply we add a batch norm or layer norm after a fully connected layer or a convolutional layer and also it is important to note that it is uh, it is better to use them before non-linearity function like uh, 10h or sigmoid function okay and then when we apply batch norm it 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 it, it converts or transform the activation to a uh, more uh, coherent uh, uh, numbers or more coherent values and then when we pass it through the next uh, layer onwards, it trains the model faster. Okay? And also, uh, we do not need to uh, use very low run learning rate. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, if we use a bigger learning rate, it will train faster and it will converge much faster compared to uh, uh, using uh, uh, definitely lower learning rate. Also, it, it, it avoids to uh, initialize the weights uh, uh, carefully. We can randomly initialize it, still it will train quite quickly. Okay? So, let us dive in and see like how we can implement it. So, what we do is we will implement it by ourselves, and then we will compare it with the PyTorch implementation. We will see like what are the important uh, arguments in PyTorch implementation and also we will see like uh, uh, how we can reproduce it in our implementation. Okay? So, let us dive in and implement it. So, first let us import torch definitely and also we need to import NN module. And now let us say define bash norm function. What it accepts is let us say it accepts definitely the batch x which is nothing but uh, a tensor and let um, it also accepts uh, gamma beta and uh, epsilon epsilon is mainly useful uh, to avoid uh, uh, numerical uh, instability so we will see like uh, this is the form that we need to implement. So, what it is uh, simply like we compute the um, mean and we compute the variance and then we simply compute uh, uh, like normalize it uh, and this epsilon is nothing but we add this so that if variance is 0, uh, it will not be a 0 and if we divide by uh, 0, it will be some math error. Okay? So, to avoid that, we simply add epsilon here. There is a paper on this uh, if you want to go uh, deeper. So, that image I took it from here only. If you look at they have uh, given this uh, uh, algorithm implementation itself. Okay? So, let us uh, go back to our implementation. So, we will implement uh, these four its, uh, steps in our, uh, our function. Okay? 
So let us say we want to have it very small number 1 e to the power minus 5 and let us uh, simply first compute uh, sample mean which we can simply compute as batch x dot mean and we need to compute it with x is 0 and also we can simply compute sample variance is equal to batch x dot varies. Also, we need to compute it at x is 0. Okay. Now, we can compute uh, standard deviation which is nothing but torch dot square root of sample variance plus epsilon and now we can compute uh, x center is equal to batch x minus sample mean okay so if you look at the formulas, what we implemented is this, we computed mean, we computed variance and then we computed x minus mean, okay. So, which is batch x minus mean and then we computed the denominator which is nothing but uh, square root of uh, variance plus epsilon, okay. So, we implemented uh, this much and then we can simply compute x norm is equal to x center divided by standard deviation. Okay. Now, we will apply this uh, scale and shift which is nothing but we multiply uh, the normalized x with uh, gamma and then add beta which is a shift. So, we can simply say x out is equal to x norm so, we simply say gamma into plus beta and that is all, that is our implementation return x out. Okay. Let us also return x norm, we will see why we are returning it. Uh, when we try to compare it with the um, PyTorch implementation, uh, we do not have control over gamma and beta. So, we want to compare with x norm. Okay. Now, let us create a dummy input. Let us say uh, it is uh, input tensor is equal to torch dot brand and let us say we want to create a 2 cross 3 tensor. Let us print it input tensor. Also, now let us pass it through the function that we created. Okay. Let us call it x batch norm is equal to batch norm x and let us say gamma is equal to 0 0.1, beta is equal to 0 0.1. Okay. It should not be x, it should be input tensor. Now, let us simply print uh, x batch norm. Okay. So, let us run and see it. Okay. We need to just uh, accept two of them which is x out and we have x norm. Okay. Now, we will print only x norm. We can print uh, x out as well. Print x out, print x norm. Okay. So, let us rerun and see it. Okay. So, now if you look at carefully, you can see like uh, this is our random input. Okay. 
and this is our normalized input. So, you see like uh, it has converted it into uh, some coherent values okay? and it will help the uh, further layer to uh, accept it more properly than when we just input these random uh, activation values. Okay? So, that is how it helps, it creates the uh, activations or it transforms the activations in a such a way that they are more uh, condensed or they are more kind of related. Okay? Now, let us uh, implement simply the batch norm that is there in PyTorch. So, we will simply say m is equal to which is model and then dot batch norm 1D. So, um, batch norm 1D is like if we have a uh, input tensor in 2D or 3D. If you have tensor more than 3D like if we are dealing with image, you need to use a 2D uh, batch norm. Okay? So, just remember like what you need to use. And uh, the other thing that it uh, needs to be uh, inputted is uh, like what is the number of, uh, what is the size of the feature. So, in this case, we have uh, the size of feature is 3. So, like the last dimension, so we can say num features is equal to 3. Okay? Now, if we pass through uh, like uh, the input tensor with this and print it out and see like how it is different than what we implemented. Okay? So, let us do that. So, we say x norm pytorch is equal to m and we pass it through input tensor print x norm pytorch. Okay? So, let us run and see it. Now, you see like uh, it is different than what uh, we implemented. So, our implementation says it should be 0 0.7 whereas, the um, pytorch implementation we are getting output is 0 0.998 and so on. So, if we look at the documentation, we will see there are a couple of differences. First of all, uh, there is a difference in this uh, variance computation. So, it uses this uh, unbiased is equal to false when it tries to compute the variance. So, we will update that part here. Okay. And now, let us run it again and see uh, if it is uh, somewhat similar. Now, you can say it is uh, quite similar, but in terms of if you look at uh, um, um, scaling factor and shift, we are applying that as well here, you know. So, if you look at uh, x out, it will, it will be different than what it uh, is x norm. Okay? So, if you look at carefully here, this is the final output, okay? whereas this is the uh, x norm output. And that is what we are getting. And this is important to mention here that these gamma and beta are the learnable parameters. Okay? And if you look at the look at the documentation or the code documentation, we will see here like uh, there is this uh, affine. Okay? So, which says like if it is true or false. Okay? And if we want to disable the learnable parameters, we simply call here a fine is equal to false. Okay? Now, it is irrespective of uh, what, uh, what uh, gamma and beta has been used, the norm output would be exactly the same. Okay? So, I hope that is clear like uh, how, uh, uh, how the batch norm is actually implemented and uh, if we implement it by ourselves, we understand it uh, more properly. Okay? And then another important factor to remember is like uh, when we uh, apply it uh, during the training, we compute the uh, 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 mean and variance for each batch. And we keep uh, accumulating these uh, mean and variance and during the inference, we use uh, average of these mean and variance. We do not compute uh, uh, mean and variance for the running uh, 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 input when we are doing the uh, inference. 
and definitely gamma and beta would be used that is optimal during the training okay so this is another factor that you need to remember and uh, i hope uh, i explained everything but still if you have questions ask in the comment section i will try to explain them further so in the next video we will talk about like what are the limitations with batch norm and then how uh, layer norm uh, resolves them so thanks for watching bye for now take care see you in the next